Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from um, Stian, and he is LB5SH, Lima Bravo 5 Sierra Hotel. Okay, and he has an interesting question about the Delta Loop. And I think this is driven by lack of space. If you put up a single band uh, delta loop, that can be quite large. Um, if you, a delta loop is literally a triangle of wire. This end is held up in the tree. This will be about six or eight feet above the ground. You can feed it at the corner. You can feed it off center like that. And how you feed it will determine whether this is vertical or horizontal um, a wave pattern, okay? And this can be quite large because that's pretty much a full wavelength uh, of loop. Um, I do not profess to be a um, expert in delta loop antennas, but if you look in the handbook or in the antenna book, you'll find all the information that you need. Plus on the internet, if you look up Delta Loop Antenna, and uh, Loop Antenna, you'll find lots of people's ideas on how it should be put up. And you can try one that works best for you. Normally you would feed this with ladder line, okay, uh, and a wide range tuner. Now, uh, if you do that, by the way, you can often use this on other bands. Now, this is usually either a pole or a rather large tree. And don't forget that these need to be up high enough that people won't walk into them. Okay, and if you do have bare wire on this, remember that somebody touching it could get an RF burn out of it. Uh, unpleasant thing to have happen. Okay, now his question is this. If you can shorten a vertical by adding some loading at the bottom, can you shorten a delta loop by adding some loading somewhere? And the answer, of course, is yes. You can do that with any antenna. Uh, 80 meter ham sticks are only about six feet long and uh, six to eight feet long. They're all the same size and there's loading in the base, and then you tune it by how far in and out the stinger uh, comes. You gotta be careful with those not to put the stinger all the way into the loop uh, that is the loading coil because that'll cause the thing to catch fire. Um, but can you put a coil in here to give it loading and then thus make this thing bigger or smaller? The answer is absolutely you can. Then the next question comes, where do you put it? Now he was thinking you might put it all in one direction, say here, uh, or say one on each side or something like that. I don't have a clue what the formula is for side. So you're going to have to do a lot of cut and try. Now use a, um, an antenna tuner that can tune all the way across the HF band. Uh, you put a small antenna in, say with 10 loops, on a piece of uh, um, plastic pipe coil form, okay? Insulated wire, of course. Stick it in there and see what happens. See what happens to the center frequency or the lowest SWR. If you put that in there, you are going to lower the frequency at which it works. Now I'd almost recommend that you load it on both sides because this is a balanced antenna. So put the loading on both sides. Equivalent loading on both sides, forget these. Now to hear they're too complicated. But you're gonna put something in, test it out, then you're gonna make a change and see what happens. The more loading you put in, the lower the frequency will go for an existing delta loop. So what do you have to do? You need to shorten the loop 
to get the frequency back up to where you want it. You will be able to get down to something like half the size of the delta loop or even more with loading. But there's nothing in nature that gives you a free lunch. Okay. What is going to happen is that the Q, meaning, well, in this case, the bandwidth of the antenna, is going to, the Q is going to go way up, which causes the bandwidth to go down. So a full loop will give you a coverage over the entire band, like for 20 meters, something like that, even 40 meters. Okay, the more you load it, the narrower that bandwidth gets until you get to the point where you've got loaded the heck out of the thing and it only works on one frequency. So you've got to check that as you load it because there's a trade-off between the amount of loading and the amount of the band that it will cover. Also, if you are trying to feed it on a different band, that loading is going to drive your tuner nuts. So uh, that's why this will kind of limit this to uh, one band. I mean, you figure an 80 meter dipole, well, an 80 meter vertical would be 20 meters in height or 66 feet. And then it did to 20 meters times three, six, 66 feet, okay. Now, if you load that thing, you can get it down to six feet. Great. But it's only going to cover a tiny portion of the band. So that's what you need to do. You need to tune this for the portion of the band that you want and uh, so on. Now, I don't know the formulas for this. I don't know where you would find the formulas for this, but it would work. Uh, maybe you can be the one to do it and write the article and show your curves for, uh, how, for each, each loop in the coil, what that does to the frequency of the loop. So I'm assuming you're increasing the frequency of the loop as you are decreasing the size the total size of the loop. It would be a very, very interesting experiment to do. So uh, there you go. Um, so this is for, let's see. No, apologies. This is from Stian, um, LB5SH. I will be very interested to hear from you to learn the results that you do from this. It is feasible, it is practical, but uh, just how to do the design for that. Maybe somebody knows the design for that, and they can put in the comments a uh, URL to go to to find a uh, design thing for this uh, Delta Loop to how much loading and how to build the coil and so on. Okay, so there you have it. I want to... Um, tell you about a new feature of this channel. My study is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm um, announcing the second giveaway to hands in the USA because postage outside the USA is just prohibitive. Uh, the item to be given away this time, this is giveaway number two, is a My Antennas NFED Half Wave 8010 1K. This is an NFED half wave for 80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 meters. Now I will warn you, the Q is high on 80 meters. And so it will not cover the whole 80 meter band. And the way it is designed, it will cover the first 100 kilohertz. But that's where FT8 is on 80 meters, so that's fine. Okay, now the key thing to keep in mind is it's 130 feet long. Now you can, um, just because it's NFED doesn't mean that that's the end that has to be up high. I ran it as an inverted V and uh, with the end where the ballon was um, at uh, uh, seven feet and then went up to the center and then went down to a tree. It worked great. I am really impressed by that antenna, I thought it would be a compromise antenna, and it is not. Okay, so here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, a QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail 
to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. On whatever you send, make sure to include the giveaway number, in this case, number two. And sadly, I received a couple for giveaway number one, and we've already had the drawing. So give the post office a while, a week, um, to get that thing in pretty early. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening, U.S. time, on September 30th. Okay, note that I pay the uh, antenna shipping, so it's all totally free to you. This isn't a lottery or anything like that, nor are you paying anything to uh, enter it. I just would like to reward um, the uh, Augies, all you Augies out there, uh, with something from the shack. Okay, um, note, and this is very important, after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. Okay, and I did that last time on the, when we gave away the, uh, the number one, I just put them in my trash can, they go in the trash, they go out, they're fine. They end up in the Montrose dump, so if you want to come get them, that's where you'll have to go. Um, so I'm, I'm not keeping any lists, I'm not selling any lists, I'm not selling your information. Now, I do open all envelopes, uh, so if you've got a comment in there, I'll be able to see it. Uh, please, no questions. Send the questions to hamradioanswers at gmail.com or to ARRL. I'm sorry, ask Dave, no hyphen, ask Dave at A-R-R-L dot O-R-G, okay? So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like, and don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.